do you think uh, LLMs are capable of consciousness? Ah, uh, great and hard question. Uh, coming from philosophy, I don't know, part of me is like, okay, we have to set aside panpsychism. Because if panpsychism is true, then the answer is like, yes, because like so are tables and chairs and, and everything else. I, th I guess a view that seems a little bit odd to me is the idea that the only place, you know, I think when I think of consciousness, I think of phenomenal consciousness, this, these images in the brain sort of um, like the, the weird cinema that somehow we have going on inside. Um, I guess I can't see a reason for thinking that the only way you could possibly get that is from like a certain kind of like biological structure. As in, if I take a very similar structure um, and I create it from different material, should I expect consciousness to emerge? My guess is like, yes. But then that's kind of an easy thought experiment because you're imagining something almost identical where it like you know, it's mimicking what we got through evolution, where presumably there was like some advantage to us having this thing that is phenomenal consciousness. And it's like, where was that? And when did that happen? And is that a thing that language models have? Um, because, you know, we have like fear responses. And I'm like, does it make sense for a language model to have a fear response? Like they're just not in the same, like if you imagine them, like there might just not be that advantage. Um and so I think I don't want to be fully, like, basically, it seems like a complex question that I don't have complete answers to, but we should just try and think through carefully is my guess, because I'm like, I mean, we have similar conversations about like animal consciousness and like, there's a lot of like insect consciousness, you know, like there's a, a lot of, um, I actually thought and looked a lot into like plants when I was thinking about this, because at the time I thought it was about as likely that like plants had consciousness. Um, and then... I realized I was like, I think that having looked into this, I think that the chance that plants are conscious is probably higher than like most people do. I still think it's really small. But I was like, oh, they have this like negative, positive feedback response, these responses to their environment, something that looks, it's not a nervous system, but it has this kind of like functional like uh, equivalence. Um, so this is like a long winded way of being like these basically AI is this it has an entirely different set of problems with consciousness because it's structurally different. It didn't evolve. It might not have it, you know, it might not have the equivalent of basically a nervous system. At least that seems possibly important for like um sentience, if not for uh consciousness. At the same time, it has all of the like language and intelligence components we, that we normally associate probably with consciousness, perhaps like erroneously. Um, so it's it's strange because it's a little bit like the animal consciousness case, but the pr set of problems and the set of analogies are just very different. So it's not like a clean answer. I'm just sort of like, I don't think we should be completely dismissive of the idea. And at the same time, it's an extremely hard thing to navigate because of all of these like uh, disanalogies to the human brain and to like brains in general. And yet these like commonalities in terms of intelligence. When uh, Claude, like future versions of AI systems exhibit consciousness, signs of consciousness, I think we have to take that really seriously. Mm -hmm. Even though you can dismiss it, well, yeah, okay, that's part of the character training. But I don't know, I ethically, philosophically don't know what to really do with that. There potentially could be like laws that prevent AI systems from claiming to be conscious something like this, and maybe some AIs get to be conscious and some don't. But I think I just on a human level as in empathizing with, with Claude, you know, consciousness is closely tied to suffering mm -hmm. to me. And like the notion that uh, an AI system would be suffering is, is really troubling. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't think it's trivial to just say robots are tools or yeah. AI systems are just tools. I think it's an opportunity for us to contend with like what it means to be conscious, what it means to be a suffering being. That's distinctly different than the same kind of question about animals, it feels like, because it's in a totally entire medium. Yeah. I mean, there's a couple of things. One is that, and I don't think this like fully encapsulates what matters, but it does feel like for me, like, um, I've said this before, I'm kind of like, I, you know, like, I like my bike. I know that my bike is just like an object, but I also don't kind of like want to be the kind of person that like, if I'm annoyed, like kicks like mm -hmm. this object. There's a sense in which like, and that's not because I think it's like conscious. I'm just sort of like, this doesn't feel like a kind of this, 
it sort of doesn't exemplify how I want to like interact with the world. And if something like behaves as if it is like suffering, I kind of like want to be the sort of person who's still responsive to that, even if it's just like a Roomba and I've kind of like programmed it to do that. Um, I don't want to like get rid of that feature of myself. And if I'm totally honest, my hope with a lot of this stuff, because I maybe maybe I am just like a bit more skeptical about solving the underlying problem. I'm like, this is a, we haven't solved the hard, you know, the hard problem of consciousness. Like, I know that I am conscious. Like, I'm not an eliminativist in that sense. Um, but I don't know that other humans are conscious. Um, uh, I think they are. I think there's a really high probability that they are. But there's basically just a probability distribution that's usually clustered right around yourself. And then, like, it <laughs> goes down as things get, like, further from you. Um, and it goes immediately down, you know, you're like, um, I can't see what it's like to be you. I've only ever had this like one experience of what it's like to be a conscious being. Um, so my hope is that we don't end up having to rely on like a very powerful and compelling, uh, answer to that question. I think a really good world would be one where basically there aren't that many trade-offs. Like it's probably not that costly to make Claude a little bit less apologetic, for example, it might not be that costly to have Claude, you know, just like not take abuse as much, like uh, not be willing to be like the recipient of that. In fact, it might just have benefits for both the person interacting with the model and if the model itself is like, I don't know, like extremely intelligent and conscious, it also helps it. So that's my hope. If we live in a world where there aren't that many trade-offs here and we can just find all of the kind of like um, positive sum interactions that we can have, that would be lovely. I mean, I think eventually there might be trade-offs and then we just have to do a difficult kind of like calculation. Like it's really easy for people to think of the zero sum cases. And I'm like, let's exhaust the areas where it's just basically costless um, to uh, assume that if this thing is suffering, then we're making its life better. And I agree with you. When a human is being mean to an AI system, I think the obvious near-term negative effect is on the human. Mm -hmm not on the AI system. Yeah. So there's, we have to kind of try to construct an incentive system where you should be, uh, behave the same, just like as you were saying with prompt engineering, behave with Claude like you would with other humans. It's just good for the soul. Yeah, like I think we added a thing at one point to the system prompt um, where basically if people were getting frustrated with Claude, uh, it was, it, it got, like the model to just tell them that it can do the thumbs down button and send the feedback to Anthropic. And I think that was helpful because in some ways it's just like, if you're really annoyed because the model's not doing something you want, you're just like, just do it properly. Um, the issue is you're probably like, you know, you're maybe hitting some like capability limit or just some issue in the model and you want to vent. And I'm like, instead of having a, a person just vent to the model, I was like, they should vent to us because we can maybe like do something about it. That's true. Or you could do a side like... Like with the artifacts, just like a side venting thing. All right, do you do yeah. want like a side quick therapist? Yeah, I mean, there's lots of weird responses you could do to this. Like if people are getting really mad at you, I don't try to diffuse the situation by writing fun poems, but maybe people wouldn't be ha that happy with it. I still wish it, it would be possible. I understand this is uh, sort of from a product perspective, it's not feasible, but I, I would love if an AI system could just like le leave, mm -hmm. have its own kind of volition. Just to be like, eh. I think that's like feasible. Like I, I have wondered the same thing. It's like, uh, and I could actually, not only that, I could actually just see that happening eventually where it's just like, you know, the model like ended the chat. Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> Do you know how harsh that could be for some people? <laughs> but it might be necessary. Yeah, it feels very extreme or something. Um, like <laughs> the only time I've ever really thought this is, I think that there was like a, I'm trying to remember, this was possibly a while ago, but where someone just like kind of left this thing interact, like maybe it was like an automated thing interacting with Claude and Claude's like getting more and more frustrated and kind yeah, of like, why are we like having, <laughs> and I was like, I wish that Claude could have just been like, I think that an error has happened and you've left this thing running. And I'm, I'm just like, what if I just stop talking now? And if you want me to start talking again, actively tell me or do something but yeah it's like um it is kind of harsh like I'd, I'd feel really sad if like i was chatting with claude and claude just was like i'm done that would be a special touring test moment where claude says i need a break for an hour mm -hmm. and it sounds like you do too and just leave close the window i mean obviously like it doesn't have like a concept of time but you right. can easily like i could make that like right now and the model would just I would I could just be like oh here's like the circumstances in which like you can just say the conversation is done 
And I mean, because you can get the models to be pretty responsive to prompts, you could even make it a fairly high bar. It could be like if, if the human doesn't interest you or do things that you find intriguing and you're bored, you can just leave. And I think that like, um, it would be interesting to see where Claude utilized it. But I think sometimes yeah. it would, it should be like, oh, this is like, this programming task is getting super boring. Uh, so either we talk about, I don't know, like, <laughs> <laughs> either we talk about fun things now or I'm just, I'm done. Yeah, it actually is uh, inspiring me to add that to the to the user prompt. 